Ondo is joining me right now. He's the chairman of FCT Tax Practitioners Association. We're looking at tax issues earlier on on the program. My team did went out to find out if Nigerians do know what the meaning of VAT is, value added tax, and you saw what they brought back. But welcome to you, Kennedy. Thank How are you? Thank you very much for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Okay, let's get started. So many things to talk about concerning these tax issues. Yeah. But let me start by asking you the question. Do you think that the tax ecosystem in Nigeria is changing? The tax environment, is it changing? Yeah, it's changing. For the better or? It's changing for better because um, there seems to be more enforcement. There seems to be more enlightenment. There seems to be more focus on the path of government to concentrate on using taxation to increase its revenue. Uh, you can see what happened in the when federal government launched the voluntary asset and income declaration. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you just based on what I read last time, federal revenue has at um, uh, June, July has already gotten 70 percent of their of their, of target, their target. Of their target. That's yes. about 2.5 trillion exactly. naira. Uh, so meaning that before the year runs and end, they're likely going to meet up with that target. But they didn't meet up with the VAT target. Uh, yeah, no. because they made I think about 305. Uh, no, the target was 305 billion. Mm. The target, what they made from the VAT program was about 30 billion naira. Uh, VAT, from what I understood, VAT was not actually a federal line revenue yes, project. Yes. It was the federal tax. So the federal minister of finance. Mm. Program. A program. A program. A tax amnesty. Yes, but yeah. of course, through FIRS too. Because uh, uh, you know, there's a difference between initiating a program and allowing another arm to drive it. You understand the point yes, I'm I, making? I uh, so the, the VED was initiated by the Federal Minister of Finance, and they uh, wanted the FIRS to help them to drive it. Of so course, who would drive it before? Because <laughs> FIRS is yeah, the tax but, authority. But, but, but uh, for, for, for me, FIRS didn't see it as the right move. As uh, because they were like, this is uh, what we are supposed to do. Uh, you are taking it upon ourselves, and but they tried anyway because uh, also the period was too was short. also short. Although there was an extension. So June thirty, it ended. On uh, the there was an extension. I expect them to run a very like a two-year program. Okay. Yeah, because if you watch um, American uh, voluntary offshore voluntary uh, declaration, it has been running for a long time, and. Uh, the more you are going, the more people are Should there even be a time frame to the expiration of VATs, for example? Uh, no, that's okay. Anyway, that's another kettle of fish. So you said that the tax environment has been changing rapidly through enlightenment by FIRS and some other things which the government is doing. But a lot of people are also crying with the poor people in Nigeria. You heard from what my team brought back. In fact, someone said, you should ask me first if I have a job before I pay taxes. Other people were like, why am I going to pay? I'm not even paying in the first place. So perhaps there's still needs uh, we still have a lot to do in terms of enlightenment and public awareness mm -hmm. of paying taxes and the usefulness of paying taxes yeah uh, there are two things there one the federal Land revenue service has a lot of work to do in public enlightenment i was surprised when some people were asked do you know the meaning of vat they said they don't know but you were surprised yes i was so surprised it means that um, this campaign this enlightenment program should be intensified you know, we have even uh, we, are, we even used the opportunity to call on FRS to partner with us. The FCT Tax Practitioners Association. One of our duties, one of our responsibilities, is to enlighten the public on tax. But it, it costs a lot of money to do that enlightenment. So we are also calling on Federal Revenue Service. We are calling on FCT Internal Revenue Service to partner with us to help them carry out this public enlightenment program. That's number one. Then number two, the federal government and the state government also need to begin to do things that will encourage people to pay tax. Where there is insecurity, where the rules are so bad, where there's no steady power supply, people are providing light for themselves, providing roads for themselves, providing water for themselves, providing securities for themselves. When you ask them to pay tax, they say, why should I pay tax? When I have provided everything government is supposed to provide for me. So the federal government, the state government should intensify effort to make sure that people are happy by providing people what they need so that it encourage them to pay tax as well. Now, let's take a look at the new uh, order given yeah. by FIRS to banks to freeze account of alleged tax defaulters. Give us a background. Give us a brief background of that. Yeah. The FIRS is empowered by the virtue of Section 31, 31 of uh, FIRS Establishment the Act. Tax, yeah. This section is also supported by Section 49 of the Company Income Tax Act, the laws of the Federation, 
the, the, that sections are, the, those sections are saying that the Federal Land Revenue Service has the right to appoint collecting agents to collect taxes from defaulting taxpayers. Who could uh, be anybody? Who could be anybody? But in this case, a bank. It could yeah. be you, it could be me. It, yes. It, uh, no, the, the, even in the, in the FRS Establishment Act, mm -hmm. the subsection there says that the FRS can also ask the, the collecting agent to also give information about the financial status, status. Of, of that particular tax, a, a tax uh, defaulter. Now, the, the statutory appointment is not exclusively for FRS. It's also available for all the 36 state board of internal revenue by the virtue of section 50 of Personal and Income Tax Act. So because the personal income tax act also provision of section 50 provide that you can also appoint a collecting agent. agent. Now, the, the the provision says that the taxes are that they are, the collecting agents are supposed to collect are tax payable. The question is, what are those tax payable? The provisions of this section did not go into the nitty gritty. It wasn't profound. It was like a superficial definition. So. What is tax payable? And we are in our own area. We look at tax payable as those taxes that are final and conclusive. Conclusive, yes. And when do we say taxes are final and conclusive? Taxes are final and conclusive when there is no contestation on tax liability. Like going to court, yes. you would have uh, undergone the 30 days, um, what do they call it, notice of, exactly. of refusal and all of and that. And all those, those yeah. processes those must processes. have taken place. Can because you take us through the processes? Let's let, let, yeah. let me take us through the processes. Yeah, let before, me take yes. you through the processes. Number one, the law allows the taxpayer to file in returns, self assessment, self assessment examination, mm. and pay taxes. So, FIRS, anything arising from that self assessment becomes a tax payable. You can't contest it again because you prepared your account, you have stated your liabilities. But th there could be also a case that the tax authority will say, no, we don't agree with you. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm coming to that. Yeah, okay. The, when the FRS, when you, you must have filed your returns as a company, FRS may look at your returns and say, no, we don't agree. Let us audit you. Mm -hmm. And they will audit the company. In the process of audit, they'll come out with additional liabilities. So when they come out with additional liabilities, if the taxpayer objects to that additional liabilities, it can be a tax payable. But if the taxpayer agree to additional liabilities raised by FRS, it becomes tax payable. Now, what I would advise taxpayers to do is that when FRS raise an assessment arising from tax audit or administrative assessment, you know administrative assessment can come up because yes. the law says that if you fail to file your returns, FRS can give you an administrative assessment. By virtue of Section 30 of Company Income Tax Act, FRS has the right to apply the profit assessment on the turnover of a company that accessible profit cannot be ascertained. Now, if FRS gives a company administrative assessment or a tax audit assessment, the first thing that company will do if you are not comfortable is to object to those assessments. You don't just object and keep quiet. When you object, you call a team of your tax consultants and auditors to sit with FRS and begin reconciliation. Is it that within that, uh, when you don't agree, you have the 30 days window yeah, if you because they write to you yes. and give the assessment and say you have 30 days There's to respond. Window. Yes. If your 30 day goes, you didn't respond. It's assumed that you have agreed to such assessment and they can enforce it. I think it's at that point that the notice of refusal to amend comes exactly. in. Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, some of us now, once we receive a letter of administrative assessment on our client, and we ask our client, look at what you say, no, 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 we can't pay this tax. It's not our doing. We quickly write to FRA that our client has objected to this assessment. So, so therefore, let us go for reconciliation. At what point uh, can the taxpayer go to court? Because I know you can also go to the tax appeal tribunal. Yeah, the taxpayer can go to court if the reconciliation with FRS could not solve the problem. Could because not solve the problem. The, yes. If, if the taxpayer no agree, mm. the FRS no, no agree. agree. They can go to court. Yeah, okay. If, 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 if FRS give assessment to a taxpayer and the taxpayer say no, the taxpayer will hire his auditors and tax consultants to sit with FRS officials to do a reconciliation. In most cases, reconciliation come out good at the benefit of the taxpayer and FRS. But in some cases, they will be at log ahead. We don't agree with that. We despite that reconciliation. So at that point, the taxpayer can go to court to challenge that such assessment. 
FRS also can go to court to challenge. So at that point, FRS cannot appoint bank as a collecting agent until the determination of the suit. Thank you very much. You know, that's why I actually did tell you that you should lay down the processes for our viewers to understand because mm -hmm. before you even get to that point, there should be some processes, yes. isn't it? Yes. Now, with this order given to banks as collecting agents of funds from alleged tax defaulters, do you think that the FIRS has really undergone the due process, even though that Section 31 enables and empowers the FIRS to do that? Yes. You, you, Section 31 empowers FIRS to come up with deep profit assessment on a company whose accessible profit cannot be ascertained. When that assessment is raised, they will forward it to taxpayer to object or pay within 30 days. Within that 30 days, the taxpayer will object. If there's an objection, reconciliation will assume. Then when after reconciliation, and whatever that has been agreed between the taxpayer and the FRS becomes a taxpayable. But we are, there's log ahead. It ended in a fiasco. What happened? The taxpayer can go to court to challenge it. FRS can also go to court. And when the matter is in court, FRS cannot appoint any bank to collect tax until the matter is determined by court or settled out of court. Okay, let's quickly take a break. And when we come back from the break, we'll continue this discuss uh, regarding if also the banks can obey the FIRS in terms of collecting uh, these funds and some, and some other issues. So 